questions? Okay, thank you. All right, so we'll move on to uh, landscapes. Do you want to we need the landscape. Oh, and now is outstanding natural landscapes. I've done it in order. Oh, okay. Right. We've got. That's the order there in John. So could we just do it? We can do it that way. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. So uh, we'll move on to the <coughs> plants. So obviously there was um, considerable discussion a few weeks back at. Um, at committee around the view shafts um, and the council's position for the hearings, which um, I believe finished today. Today's the last day on the view shaft hearings. Council's case was presented last week. So just to recap, in the notified plan, 87 view shafts, um, all identified as regionally significant um, uh, and sitting up there mapped in the, um, or, or discussed in the regional policy statement with the rules sitting in the um, district plan part of the unitary plan. Uh, around the cones, we have what we call height sensitive areas, which provides a, a bit of a, a restriction on development around the base of, of a number of the cones, uh, generally to two stories. Um, they were largely rolled over, well, they were all rolled over from the operative regional policy um, statement. <coughs> and new buildings or structures that, that went through the, what we call the floor of the view shaft, <coughs> they penetrate through the floor, they were to be avoided. That was the, um, the approach. Um, also in the notified plan, um, buildings or structures, um, so for the view shafts, um, not the height sensitive areas, view shafts, anything over eight metres that penetrated um, a view shaft was a non-complying activity. So you could go um, through the view shaft up to eight metres, but if you went beyond that, non-complying and, and would always be publicly notified. That was the approach for the view shafts. The height sensitive areas around the base of many of the cones um, permitted up to eight metres, but beyond that, non-complying, and again, would be publicly notified. Minor infrastructure, for example, upgrading a, a street light, light poles and so on, that was permitted, but other more significant infrastructure was restricted discretionary, not non-complying, to go through the view shafts or the height sensitive areas. So those are the rules in the notified plan, the submitters. Uh, some sort that all 87 were retained. Uh, there were a few nominations for additional view shafts. Uh, some were concerned about the lack of clarity around what the council is trying to protect with these view shafts. Uh, some concerned about the potential economic costs, lost opportunities for growth and development, and some saying that they couldn't even achieve a reasonable use of their land with the controls. Uh, some didn't agree that they were all regionally significant. They felt that this should be a category of district or local, which we've um, discussed with, um, with you previously. Um, there were uh, submitters who asked for more flexible rules. Some didn't like the no adverse effects approach. They felt that, you know, minor effects on view shafts was, was fine. But of course, then you get into cumulative effects of more and more minor, and then that becomes quite major. So there's an issue there that had to be worked through. And there were some submissions asking for um, development of Maori land and tree sediment land as permitted activities within the view shafts. Uh, we had interim guidance from the panel, as you may recall. Uh, key points of the panel didn't believe that at that point in time that all the view shafts were regionally significant or that any breach of the view shaft um, should, would be inappropriate. They required, the panel required experts from council and other submitters to caucus uh, and the panel's guidance when it was considered by the committee last August, uh, the committee did agree to review the criteria for regionally significant views and look at developing criteria for local views and to do a further review of the impacts of the view shafts on development. So that's going back to last August, but time has certainly moved on. The council's position at the hearing was that 78 uh, view shafts should be retained as regionally significant. Council's position was that nine view shafts um, were proposed to be removed because of the compromised nature. Um, there was a report to committee um, seeking agreement to um, go into the hearings uh, with further um, recommended removals, but that was not supported by the committee. Um, so in terms of the uh, rules, list of some of the key changes there, um, allowing for buildings to penetrate the view shaft um, 
that don't further intrude into the, the view itself. So that's often there may be a building f further away than where the development is happening. Um, and actually you could potentially build without compromising the view at all because there's a building in the, in the background that's already breaching the view shaft. So th there's a, a technical way of drafting the rules to allow for that to happen where there's absolutely no further loss of any view. Um, temporary activities, so some temporary structures. Um, uh, the council's proposal at the hearings was that they should be permitted activity with controls around that. Buildings up to eight metres in height where the building uh, will intrude into a view shaft uh, was a restricted discretionary activity rather than uh, non-complying activity. Uh, improved provisions for um, upgrading network utilities, electricity generation facilities and road network activities and a change to allow for um, nine metres in height in a business zone, um, healthcare facility zone or school zone and up to eight metres in height in any other zone within those height sensitive areas. And that's um, an overview of the council's position at the hearings on the view shafts. John, um, these volcanic view shafts are, are, um, are totally different from the local view shafts. That's, I think I heard you say the submissions to yesterday closed on the local view shafts. But the hearing finishes today. Okay. On so local view shafts and the volcanic view shafts are all in one unit, all in one hearing before the panel. But all of the evidence uh, from council and the submitters on the local view shafts was heard much earlier, so the hearings were adjourned. So they kicked off the hearings on the regional ones and the local view shafts last year. They adjourned the hearing, the experts had to go off and caucus, further work took place, we came back to committee. They reconvened the hearing on the volcanic view shafts, but the local view shafts had the hearing completed, um, or their part of the hearing completed last year, so there was no, no further um, evidence or discussions on the local view shafts in the last couple of weeks. Okay. That, was, that was essentially last year. Well, John, I just uh, maybe have a bit of a sidebar with you later on about uh, local view shafts. Yep. Sure. Any other questions on volcanic view shafts? Nope. Okay. Oh, Councillor Casey. Just, are we expecting them to come back and tell us a lot of our view shafts are local? We really Here's don't. Why. This We're, well, we really don't know. I mean, the early indications from that guidance last year were that that might be the case. But since then, experts have caucused. They've had more evidence from council. Um, like time has moved on, so it's really crystal ball gazing. It's a possibility that they will come back with that. If they did that, let's say they decided to downgrade some to local, our response to that is what? I mean, if, if, if we, we wanted to... Can Councillor Casey... How do you know defend <laughs> that? How do you... Do, how we, do, how we, do you yeah, we can't kind of go there now because <clears throat> part of it is we need to wait and see what the recommendation is and then obviously we will get our response and then we'll debate that response. But if our position got into mediation was that we wanted to keep all 78 and they downgrade some of them, the chances are we're not going to like that too much. And we might not, but we can't second guess at this stage. Well, what's the process? If oh, you, We can't talk about that? So the it may be, actually we, we had talked about starting each of these meetings with just a process reminder, so you're quite right Councillor Casey, it's probably good to just kind of remind people to our three viewers out there who may not have been quite, have been glued all the way through, it's quite good to remind them. So, so, the, so the process is that once we receive the recommendations from the hearings panel, staff will be looking through the 19-odd the topics that this committee has in the past indicated are the most critical topics you want us to give you um, an indication on where the panel landed. Volcanic view shot, all of these topics we're bringing to you at these meetings are, are one of those 19 topics. So we will be looking at the recommendations on volcanic view shafts and at the meeting, um, which is scheduled for the 16th, 17th and 18th of August, we will be bringing back to the governing body um, an indication on what has been the recommendation of the panel, whether or not officers rec recommend you either 
accept that recommendation or reject it. If we as staff are recommending rejection, we will have to give you alternative provisions to put in its place in a Section 32 cost-benefit analysis. If the councillors, um, once they hear the staff recommendations, um, wants to reject something that staff have not recommended rejection, we will have to craft the provisions and bring them through that three-day process, which is why one of the things that we've talked about previously is that um, we'd be quite keen to, to set up a process where if you have concerns in any particular area and feel this would be too far for you in a change of position, it would be good to understand those earlier so that we can be looking at those and, and, and see what kind of work we might have to do to address those in that three-day period. But one could imagine if we supported the 78 volcanic view shafts, if they downgrade any of them, there'll be some work we'd want you to do to, sure. to keep them. Yeah, so and, some, and, some, some and, and part of that might be they might downgrade the, the view shafts, but they might introduce other rules that satisfy our concerns about what happens in those view shafts. That just could be an option, so we need to understand that before we can really come up with a response. It's the... Uh, is what they're proposing accompanied by other other changes to the rules that might make their changes acceptable, and that will be the instance in a lot of a lot of their recommendations that we have to look at. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I'm sure there'll be lots more discussion on this one. Right. Oh, and else. All right. Outstanding natural landscapes. Um, it's not on the slide here, but as with the SEA, Significant Ecological Area slide, this one does sheet back to Section 6 of the RMA, a matter of national importance to recognise and provide for outstanding landscapes. And so, as we all know, Auckland does have some pretty stunning special landscapes, particularly in our rural areas. Um, and a number of these important landscapes have been identified in the PORP as outstanding using criteria that sit in the regional policy statement again, so it's similar to the SEAs. You've got the RMA saying it's a matter of national importance. You've got the council's regional policy statement um, putting in the criteria for what the threshold is for something becoming outstanding. Um, and obviously they were mapped in parts of Auckland, mainly in, in rural areas and predominantly around the coast. There are some more inland SEAs, but a lot of them are um, coastal. Um, so just some examples here. We've got um, Jackie Hill, ONL, on the northern part of the Manukau Harbour. Uh, so just showing an image of the landscape there. And the ONL is this green hatched area. Often you'll see a carve out where the land has been developed. So generally the criteria would say once you've got development happening, it it's compromises it from being outstanding. So that's that link back to the criteria. So you'll see areas <coughs> that are sort of carved out in places, but the rest of it is mapped. They often straddle the land and coastal areas. Um, a lot of the SE, uh, sorry, the outstanding natural landscapes uh, do that. We've only got one category of outstanding natural landscape. We don't have a land and a marine, uh, unlike SEAs. Uh, the other, it's our landscape architect calling through now. <laughs> um, Buckledon Beach, um, which is up in the northeast, uh, Rodney. Area again, you can see a bit of a, a, a carving out of the the um, settlement there, but the outstanding natural landscape <coughs> along the, the headlands um, here and here and out into the coast. So a lot of work done by landscape architects to um, map these areas uh, and the submissions. So we had submitters uh, asking for more permissive. Um, <coughs> rules for development. So we did have some submitters saying that's fine, I don't have a, an issue with this part of Auckland or my property being identified as an outstanding natural landscape, but I'd like more flexibility around what I can do. Uh, we had the 50 square metre um, threshold on permitted buildings within um, SEA, so some submitters were asking for that to be increased. Uh, some submitters were concerned about a clause that said where there's no other practical alternative. So um, there was concerns about, well, what does that actually mean? Clarification around the rules for farming and forestry. 
Uh, the worst summit is asking for increased protection, so no development at all within outstanding landscapes without a resource consent. Uh, some submitters thought that there should be improved provision for infrastructure. 